This is the first in a series of lessons on programming Lazarus. And that's a free cross-platform visual development system based on the object Pascal language. And like the commercial Delphi system, Lazarus can be installed not only on Windows, but also on Mac, on a Mac OS or, or on Linux. And it can be used to write, design and debug applications on all those operating systems. Now, later on in this series, I'll show you how to do that by developing a Lazarus application on Windows and then copying it onto a Raspberry Pi computer. That's uh, one of these. OK, so that will be running a version of the Linux operating system. But before I get to that, let's see how to get started with Pascal development on a desktop computer. First, Download and install the current version of Lazarus with Free Pascal for your operating system from lazarus-ide.org. And then continue with this tutorial. Oh, and I'd also like to recommend that you bookmark the Lazarus and Free Pascal wiki, as that will give you lots more information about installing, setting up, and using Lazarus. And that's at wiki.freepascal.org. OK, so here I'm running Lazarus on Windows. In most cases, it will work more or less the same on Mac OS or Linux. But if anything doesn't work as you expect, for example, certain keyboard commands might be different, well, use the Lazarus help system or the uh, online wiki to get more information. When you start Lazarus, this is what you will see. I won't waste your time by explaining everything here. The wiki explains all that in detail. Let me just point out the essential. This here is the code editor, and that's where you'll be writing your programs. And this is a blank form. That's, the, that's like a blank window, and you'll design things. You'll design the user interface on there. Now, to toggle between the form and the editor on Windows, press F12, just like that. And you can see this and other shortcut keys listed on the view menu here. With the form visible, I can create a user interface by dragging components from the bar up here. There's a tabbed list of components just by dragging and dropping them onto the form. So here I'll click a button. Well, it's actually more of a click and uh, click again to drop and click the edit component and drop that and then I can move them about. Resize them as I want to create the uh, user interface. Now the menu system up here that provides access to most of the features to save and load files and do all sorts of other things to start new projects. You can see the project menu up here and so on. Now I'll explain some of these as we go along. For the sake of simplicity, in this first example, I'm going to do without a visual interface. I'm not going to bother with a form like this. So I'm going to create a project just to show you how to create a very, very simple Lazarus project. Project, new project. And then from this list, I'll choose simple program and OK. Now, Lazarus automatically, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't save my uh, changes there. Lazarus automatically writes this program code, this very, very simple program code for us. Now, this, in fact, is a valid Pascal program. It starts with the keyword program up here um, and the name of the project, Project 1. And then after that, it's got these two keywords, begin and end. And keywords in Pascal are reserved words. That is, they're predefined by the Pascal language to have a special meaning. Whereas the program name up here, Project 1, well, that's user selected. This has been auto generated, but you can create programs with names that you choose. Now, if I wanted to call it something else, I could just let's try it now. File, uh, save as, and it's going to prompt me to save, and I'll call it uh, my project. And save. And you can see that this has been changed. The name has been changed up here to the name that I just used. Now, and right at the end, you can see that there is this full stop, this uh, period. It's the terminating character of a Pascal program. 
Now this program, while it's valid, it doesn't do anything of any interest, so let me add some actual code to do something. So I'll go up here first of all, and I'll declare a variable var, another keyword, and I'll write a name colon string semicolon. Now, a variable is a name to which values can be assigned. This variable here has to be of a specific data type, which I've declared to be string. A string is just a bit of text, that's some characters strung together. In Pascal, unlike some other languages that you may be familiar with, variables must all be declared before being used, and they're declared in a section that begins with this var keyword. Now, the variable name, as I've said, is followed by a colon, then its type, and then a, then a semicolon. The actual executable code that I want to run needs to be placed between the begin and end keywords. Let me do that now. Right. Enter your name. Colon space. All right, is that all correct? I think it is. Right, so let's have a look at what this is. Write is a Pascal procedure, which if you're used to other languages, you can think of as a function that doesn't return anything. Or to put it even more simply, it's just a named block of code that will do something when I call it. I call it by entering its name. That is, I it's called write, so I just write that name of that uh, procedure here. Now, the write procedure will write a string if I place that string between parentheses, as I've done here, and uh, once again, I need to put a semicolon right at the end uh, of this line here. Now, in Pascal, strings are bits of text between single quote characters. Now, I want to read in some text used by the user, so let me do that. Put another line of code down here. Readlin name. Okay. So here I use the Readlin procedure and I put the variable a name, which is the one that I declared up here. Readlin reads a line of text after the user presses the enter key. Then it assigns that text to my pre declared variable. I can then get at that text using the variable name, and that's what I'll do next. So add another bit of code down here. Rightlin, hello, comma, a name. So this will write hello, followed by the name I entered. Oh, and I'll just add one more line here. Relin. Okay, this final line does nothing except wait for me to press the enter key. That is, it waits to read a new line. That's because I want the console window to stay visible so I can see what's been displayed in it until I press the enter key. So now let me run my program. I'll click this green arrow up here to run it. And it prompts me. I say OK. Up pops the console window. Enter my name. Hello, Hugh. So let's see how this matches the code. So here, this piece of text here, enter your name. That was written by the write procedure. When I called the write procedure up here, then it waited for a readlin to occur. Readlin occurs when I press enter. And at the end of this line, I entered my name Hugh. So the name Hugh was assigned to that variable, a name, which is the variable between parentheses after readlin. Then finally, it says hello, comma Hugh. Well, that's this line down here, writelin hello comma was in the string, then the value of the a name variable, well that was assigned at readlin, and that was the name that I entered, hue, and finally it's got this line at the end, readlin, and that's just waiting for me to press enter again, and I'll do that, and the program ends. So, now I've written a program in just three lines, four lines if you count that final readlin. 
In the next lesson, I'll show you how to use Lazarus to write a visual program. I'll also explain the essentials of the Pascal language. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure never to miss any new videos by subscribing and clicking the bell. And I'll be back with more Lazarus tutorials soon.